welcome to another Home Spa Beauty podcast. My guest this week is Elise Marie, otherwise known as the Beauty Witch. I had a brilliant time talking with Elise, especially because her latest book, The Beauty Witch's Secrets, is fascinating. There's so much in it that resonated with me, so much that I didn't know, things that make complete sense once someone guides you through, and it also allows you to take more control over your rituals for your well-being. So your rituals for sleep, for your skin, for your body, for what you eat, what you drink. It really is a lovely way to look at your holistic approach to life. And Elise is the perfect person to guide you through. She's so engaging, funny, witty and very glamorous. So I hope you enjoy this chat and all the details will be in the description so that you can purchase the Beauty Witch's Secrets for yourself or look at Elise Marie's website where there is so much more information. Hope you enjoy our chat. Well, Elise Marie, thank you so much for talking with me. I've got the book here. It's beautiful. Um, Before we start talking about you and why you wrote the book, can I just say that I love the layout. The pictures of you are beautiful. There's a lot of pictures inside. And I love the colour scheme as well. And I'd love to know, just before we get into it, are the colours really, are they important to you too? Did you think about the entire look and the beautiful, the purples and the golds? Does this have significance within it? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. And thank you for having me here. Um, yes, I well, I was stuck on jewel tones. I really wanted jewel tones. And that, so we, we kind of, took that and ran with it the art department at my publisher did a great job obviously and um, I wasn't necessarily stuck on purple I had initially wanted the cover to be more in the red family because red is my favorite color red and gold red and gold uh, fire colors but they ended up going with the purple and it's it's absolutely beautiful I mean I love all colors and As you know, they're all magical. They all have their own significance. I just naturally will gravitate toward gold, fire, red, orange, you know, that kind of thing. So, but we have, I think we have a nice little representation of all kinds of colors in there. So it's good. I wanted it to feel really lush. Oh, it was. And that's why I wondered if there was a reason for it because that's exactly, it is lush. And it just feels quite elegant and I just, Mm. I think the colour scheme is just, it was very inviting, Mm. especially because we're moving into the autumn fall soon too. I just think it's, you're getting near Christmas after that too. It feels like that perfect, can you imagine opening it on Christmas morning and just feeling as if it's just the perfect time for it? Oh, I love that you say that. I actually hadn't thought about it that way because of course I've been seeing this book (laughs) You know, for quite a while so I'm kind of used to it but yeah I think that would be that would be really kind of special wouldn't it I oh, like that yeah. <laughs> and then back to yourself though before we really get into the book there are so many strings to your bow your actress certified is it holistic nutritionist yes writer please tell us more what what would you say if you had to put it in order what comes first in the list of everything that you do? Well, I would say that since I started really writing this book, which was a few years ago, I was writing before that. I So I would say that's sort of taken over. I also have a line of products. And so there's there's kind of a branding entrepreneurial end of it as well. But I would say that the, the, the writing and the authorship has definitely taken over. The acting has gone way by the wayside. In fact, I, I was speaking to a friend the other day and saying, my gosh, I would just love to do a play. I would love to do a stage reading, anything, anything. I would love to do that. So I do miss some of those 
aspects, but then there are others that have taken over that have been really beautiful. And I get a chance to speak with people like yourself. And that's, that's the really nice part of the whole, the book actually coming out. You know, it's nice to actually hold it in my hand and have it and, and have other people enjoying it, but it's just really great to connect with people on it who've seen it, who have it. The holistic nutrition definitely was something that was important to me. I've always been very steeped in wellness, health, nutrition, and also that goes part and parcel with creating beauty potions. But they've really all rolled into one. I mean, I've done a lot of writing that is more food oriented. And so obviously you're seeing that in the book too. There's a lot of potions, brews, elixirs. In my other outlets, the articles I write and blogging and my monthly column, I do always try to include some sort of beauty bite and uh, or or some sort of witch's potion that will that will really feed you from the inside out and really feed your beauty and your well being and overall just have that feeling of just making you feel good because you know you're doing something for yourself. And I love that. I saw, I was reading your columns and that's what I loved about it. It was the complete holistic approach, something to nourish the inside, something to nourish the outside. And I thought it was such a nice way of looking after yourself and everything. I mean, everything did look really good too. You obviously put a lot of thought into everything you put out there. Thank you. Yes, I, I, it's funny because when you write recipes, let's say, whether it's, whether it's for skincare, hair care, body care, food, drink, after a while you start to say, okay, it's, it's autumn's coming up. How many different ways have I made a pumpkin something or an apple spice something? And you start to feel like, well, do I have anything else to offer? And then something will happen in life something will inspire it's usually some combination of what's going on in the world what's going on in the stars what's going on seasonally maybe what's just going on with me personally or a friend and I'm maybe not addressing that specifically but they know who I'm talking to <laughs> um, those are the kind of things that always keep me going mm -hmm. and and they make me they, they make me feel like they're all kind of evergreen, so to speak. They can, you know, the same seasonal concoctions can come back year after year. I, I have my favorites. I'm sure lots of people have their favorites. But also there, there are also very time to that moment. So it's, it's really fun. It, it, it definitely inspires me. And as long as I'm feeling inspired I feel like then it's going to touch someone else the minute I get bored it's all over you know <laughs> so you know and even like your your energy it's just it's a really good advert for the book because beauty witches secrets you're basically telling us everything you follow everything you recommend and you're a great advert for it this seems to me to be well you know when people say there's a time when something appears for you and that's clearly the time that you were meant to see it. I feel yeah. like we're in a moment in time where the world's always upside down in some shape or form. Mm. But sometimes I feel as if we're losing touch with the information that was passed down to us. Um, you know, they talk about the remedies that used to work. Your aunts or your gran or people in the family used to say this is a family recipe that works, whether it be again, skincare, food. We've been conditioned over the past few generations to believe that it's better to buy it from brands. It's better to buy mass produced. Even when you go to the doctor now, it's all about medication. They don't ever mm. say, make yourself up a little, what well, used to be a poultice, didn't it? Or they'd make up a cream. We seem to be losing touch with that. But I feel as if you're bringing back the art of actually mixing for yourself, thinking about what you need. Would you say that that's on the right lines of what you were thinking? 
I would say that's definitely part of the motivation. We are absolutely disconnected with the natural world. And there are many of us that are desperately trying to stay connected in the day to day. It can be in the smallest way, but we, we're, we're trying so hard to not lose that connection. But it's all around us, really, this, this disconnect. And part of, I always feel that part of what makes these timeless remedies, these potions, these elixirs work, and, and even just um, the ritual of taking care of yourself, part of what makes it work is time. And what do we never have enough of now? What is everybody complaining about, including myself? Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have time to make something from this book. Mm -hmm. Ms. Marie, I don't, I don't. And it's, well, okay, that is fair. We're all probably juggling home, family, possibly two jobs, possibly who knows what. Hopefully something creative in the mix. And that's part of what I'm hoping to inspire is even if you just take a few moments on a Sunday evening, let's say Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, before your crazy week starts up again, and you make yourself a little potion, or maybe you've already made it and now you have it, because maybe you are working with the lunar cycles and, and solar power and the planets and the stars and and maybe you already have this potion and you are going to use it and you're going to take a little bit of time for a nice bath, a face mask, maybe a body scrub, a hair mask. Maybe it's just one of those things. I don't mean to make it too complicated, but, but I do find that when you soak in the bath, it's really easy to have all of that going on at the same time you're so <laughs> and have your beauty cocktail at the same time. Yeah. It doesn't have to have booze in it, but it can, but it doesn't have <laughs> But um, I do find that I find that taking the, that time for yourself and quite honestly insisting upon it, especially if you don't live alone, especially if you have a lot of obligations and you have a full calendar because who doesn't really? I feel like that is this, this act of preservation. It's an, it's an act of, of this, this inner warrior saying, I'm going to just strengthen myself. And, and it does reconnect us to sacred pauses, sacred space, sacred plant medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's much like uh, kitchen witchery. You know, you put, you put that energy into your food and then you eat it and you share it. And it's just this cycle. And it's a very similar thing with, with anything topical as well. And, I also, I feel very strongly that we do have time somewhere in our day, every single day. I don't care if it's 10 minutes. I don't care if it's in the evening, it's the, in the morning, it's midday, whatever it is, your, your midday beauty break on your lunch hour, you have time. Yeah. We all have a little bit of time to take care of ourselves. I remember the first time many, many, many moons ago when I was first concocting beauty potions and it was a very basic, it was body scrubs and facial scrubs and I was selling them at a little, a little bazaar. And this is going way, way, way back. And I remember this group of ladies came up to me and they're like, oh, this looks nice. This smells nice. And they're like, oh, I don't have time to take a bath. And my immediate reaction, completely unfiltered, as I often am, just said, oh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. I mean, you don't have time to take a bath. Who heard of us? Who's ever heard of that? That's ridiculous. We're women. So I feel like there is time. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we can stop scrolling on our phones briefly. We cannot watch television for a period of time. There are ways we can shave it down and we can make that space. It's, it's like saying, I don't have a budget for organic food. Well, yes, organic food is very expensive. Organic product ingredients are expensive. 
but there's going to be somewhere in your budget you can take from. Maybe it's your takeout. Maybe it's your coffee out. Maybe you can prepare a really nice brew at home and bring it. And you're bringing your magic. I was, um, I was on a film set a few years ago. And I always brought, we were, you know, you have to get there at ridiculous hours. You have to be there and be ready to go at four in the morning and then be all ready and then sit and wait. And I would bring this thermos of what's uh, actually a, a potion in the book. It's called Focus Pocus. So you guys should definitely look at it because it's a really good one. And I would bring it, it would be a cold, it was November, I'll never forget in, in New York and it was cold. And I had, I always had this brew and everybody would come around, oh, what's that? You know, oh, here, take a little bit. And of course I'd end up giving half of it away. But just that little warm, cup of something very magical think about the the effect a, a hot cup of tea has on you just at that right time of the day or when you just need it you just need that that pick me up that comfort that that moment that little pause and here it was and so if you can picture that amplified because now you've added magic to it and you've added special things to it that are really going to make you feel better they're going to give you some energy some focus and i always say know that you're drinking in your magic you know know that you're you're feeding your beauty and your strength as you're consuming something so or or applying something so i just feel like these things give us some desperately needed bit of power during the day you can say comfort you can say pleasure you can say all kinds of things but i also think it's power i think you empower yourself to be happier be better do your job better be a better mother better wife sister you know what whatever it is that you're doing in that moment a better artist creator and I think it's really important that we don't disconnect from that any further. That's so beautifully put. And I love that you speak about rituals because you're right. It seems as if we're, we move at a fast pace. It seems to be getting faster all the time. Mm -hmm. And you write beautifully about the ritual of sleep. And we, <laughs> all, we all know that we need good quality sleep. Sometimes it's not about how long you're actually trying to sleep, but as you say, about the ritual, the approach. And I really liked how you wrote about that in the book. Would you like to just surmise how you view, how the beauty witch's view of sleep is? Yes, and a lot of that for me has been very personal because I have never been good at sleeping. I'm a perpetual doer and it even as a small child, it was always very hard for me to settle down between just having a lot of fire and a lot of need to do things and, and uh, dream things up and then, and then make them real. It's very hard for me to simmer down. It's always been, and, and mentally, I think we all have that going on mentally and of course, we and the other part of that too is if you if you are intuitive, if you have any of that aspect of it going on, you're probably awake in the middle of the night when the moon is full. You're probably awake in the middle of the night when there's some planetary thing going on. It never fails. You know, my cat will wake up, I'll wake up, and then I'll sort of check my calendar and my notes and say, oh. Well, that's what that was. Okay. And you're having dreams, you're having visions, all of these things. And we can't live on a schedule that accommodates, you know, um, it kind of brings us back to the, the natural healing. Whereas a lot of that was always created and utilized when there was more time when you could stay home, if you weren't feeling well. So the sleep ritual for me it became very obvious to me that 
I was never probably going to get eight hours in my entire life, but I could get six really good ones. Yeah. And I can do six really good ones. I, that's fine. And everybody has a different range, of course. And so to me, it became everything is becomes about ritual <laughs> so it becomes the ritual of brewing your coffee in the morning the ritual of creating your dinner the ritual of your beauty stepping up to your beauty altar and preparing yourself for the day or for the evening the ritual of the bath the ritual of sleep then became like everything else you set the stage you you bring in your little cast of characters your wardrobe your everything <laughs> and and you make it important for you. You make it something that's, it's not to be messed with. It's it's there and, and it's for you. Yeah. So why not? And so, yes, I, I, I think there are very, very specific things about unplugging electronics, about having soft lighting, about having something beautifully scented that calms you my scent and your scent may be two different things but that's fine and i think you know i like scented sheets i like scented air scented candles don't fall asleep with the candles burning. yes <laughs> uh, soft music i really like to listen to music in the evening and read and usually read first while i'm a little bit more alert and then start listening to music I try not to watch too much in the evening. I don't have a television, but I have a, I have a laptop. So that's, that's always very, <laughs> very tempting. But I try not to because I know me. I'll get stimulated. I'll, I'll start thinking. I'll start jotting things down. And I won't get any rest. So I think it's incredibly important to know yourself and to really establish those rituals and make your, your sleeping space beautiful. And inviting and well you you just said something there that I think sums up why the book is such a good idea to buy as a gift for yourself or for others you said I know me and I think that in today's world there's a lot of pressure for us to conform to what someone else thinks we should do but mm -hmm. you're writing you're writing for us when we read the book you're not dictating to us you're suggesting you might like this or you might like that or you might want to think about this whereas quite often I read books or I read blogs or I watch videos and I'm being told I should be doing this I should be doing that and I'm being told but you just said I know me and I think that's probably the most powerful thing that you can say to us is to get to know ourselves I love that you just said that because sometimes I don't see what other people are seeing. And so I love that you're getting that from the book because no, I, I, it's not up to me to tell you what makes you feel good, what makes you glamorous, what you should be doing or should not be doing as a woman or a man. There's a chapter in here for men, of course. But I do think it's incredibly important. I think it's I think it's essential to be you. Mm -hmm. Whoever you are, enhance your strengths, your beauty individually. D don't look at what else is out there. It doesn't matter what else is out there. This is for you. And that's why I also encourage a lot of times, I just I I just ask that everybody is mindful about how they substitute, but I do encourage substituting and kind of tweaking things to your liking. You may not like a certain scent or a certain type of thing, or you may think, oh, what if I have a reaction to that? Or I'm a huge fan of rose and some people can't use rose because it's very active. And although I know it's really good for skin, really all skin types, some people will put it on their skin, let's say a rose hip oil or a rose rose absolute and say, oh, it's making me pink. I don't like that. Well, it will some, it will calm down. It will. But if that's troubling you right off the bat, then you're reacting negatively to that plant and it's not for you. So I would always say, choose something that does work for you, but also, you know, there's a huge index of ingredients in the book. It's very long. I actually had to edit it down because it was really wordy. 
but it's there really not only to educate and to and to hopefully maybe share something interesting about each each ingredient but also to say if you're going to substitute something don't just kind of do it without awareness choose something that's going to have a similar magical intention if that's what you the reason that what drew you to this potion or a similar topical or ingestive quality because then all of a sudden it's not doing what it's set out to do so just to be mindful of that but yes you you have to um you have to be you yeah. who else can you possibly be <laughs> exactly and sometimes it feels as if we're trying to be forced to be different variations of the same look everyone's got mm -hmm. a similar look at the moment but I love individuality and I think it really comes through and as you said it is so comprehensive in the book if that was you actually editing it down wow because it's still so comprehensive <laughs> and you know that that's another thing though leading on to um, the beauty altar I love that it's you know doing your rituals your beauty rituals at your altar it's such a nice way to think of things to to worship your beauty how you feel about yourself to build your confidence I think that's such a good message it's not vanity it's about appreciating you absolutely I get angry when people assume that if it's beauty it's fluff it's just vanity it's surface that makes me nuts and that will provoke a fight <laughs> but, but or, or, a spirited debate let's say but um no it is absolutely about taking care it's about it's about well-being it's about treating yourself as you should be treated we all should be treated well and if if we're not going to treat ourselves well how can we expect anyone else to? I always say the act of the beauty ritual is very much about casting a spell upon yourself to show others how you are meant to be treated. And there's nothing vain or, or selfish or anything about that. It's, it's simply well-being. And I think because we haven't, in a lot of ways, we haven't been allowed to reclaim that, at least maybe out in the mainstream media it's that we have to do 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 all the time we have to be there for everybody else we have to be the best at everything and as you pointed out we have to look a certain way or carry ourselves a certain way or wear a certain kind of clothing i think that's just madness i just and i understand when you a lot of times younger people i think we've all probably done it younger people will maybe hop onto a trend because you want to belong maybe when you're younger or maybe you're not quite sure who you are or what your look is and that was another motivation for the book is to I'm I tend to think in terms of women my age when I write because of course I think everybody's my age somehow that's reading it but actually I have quite a, a younger audience and I'm always trying to encourage everyone to not necessarily look on their Instagram and have the same, you know, dolly face and eyebrows and whatever they're going to do. Find your look, your rhythm and, and find out as early on as possible what you're drawn to in the, in the magical world, in the natural world, in the, in the holistic world. Because the more in tune you are, the more you're going to choose the things that will work for you. We don't all necessarily align with the same types of healing. Yeah. You know, some people really connect with essential oil. Some people really connect, connect with homeopathy. Some people really connect with massage or yoga, or maybe we like all of it. We enjoy all of it, but there are certain types of things, certain herbs just align better with certain people. And I think the more you know yourself, the more you can choose that and you don't have to go to the doctor necessarily at the outset and say, oh, I don't know what's wrong with me, I'm fatigued. You can look at it and say, 
all right, what's going on? And that's, that's one of the things about stepping up to the beauty altar and the mirror is your skin is always changing. Mm -hmm. Your body's always changing on the inside and it's going to come through on the outside. Everything is always changing. It can be because obviously of age, it can be seasonal. It can be just a lot of times it's just stress. So when you look at your skin and you say, oh, my skin looks, my pores look clogged. Well, it's a heat wave. All right, maybe we need to cleanse a little bit better right now, be a little bit more aware of that. But also, is it coming from stress? How do I feel? What's going on? Why are all these flares happening? And I think that's really important. You know, so much sense. And obviously, when we talk about the beauty witch and about the holistics, and I totally get it, you must get people that are skeptical. So, what do you say to people who maybe don't want to or just don't know how to connect with the concept of rituals and potions? Do you get that quite a lot, or do you get people that just don't? they're almost frightened to enter that world and see what they can do i would mostly say the the criticism other than beauty is vain and nonsense and all of that which i just but i think what is most common for me has been people that come to me and say i would love to do this but I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I would love to do this, but I don't have the budget. I would love to do this, but I don't know where to begin. That's why I wrote the book. And it is the, it is theoretically the first in a series. So there will be more, but that's really a big motivation for writing the book other than that it just had to come out of me, which was, it's a place to start. It's a little compendium of how to make things and what ingredients do what things and why these concepts are important to us or should be important to us and when I was I was nutrition counseling quite a lot years back and that was it was a very common thing for people to come to me and say I said I don't have time to prepare my food I don't have time to think about my skincare I don't have time to take a bath I don't have the budget for clean food. I used to work at a day job with a group of women who every time they would see me eating lunch would say the same thing. They'd say, oh, I wish I could eat like that. <laughs> well, you can. Of course you can. No, but my husband doesn't like healthy food. Okay, you know, and so, and that's, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. As I say, if you live with any other being besides yourself, you you may or may not have these challenges. And there's always a way around it. There's always a way to change the, the energy a bit for yourself. And again, show others, no, this is, you know, you don't have to eat this or you don't have to take this meditative time in the morning or you don't have to go for a walk. Well, you don't have to do any of these very simple things that are very, very, very good for you, but I'm going to do them and you are welcome to join me. And if you don't want to join me, well, then I guess you're, we're going to be making two dinners or we're going to be buying two sets of things. And in my experience, I, I don't like to preach. I don't like, to, I, in fact, I, I I recoil at anything like that. I would rather just seduce by by being and doing. So it's like, oh, what do you have? Oh, that looks good. Oh, what do you have? Hey, your skin looks good. What, what are you using? Because it's the dead of winter and my skin is peeling, but your skin looks radiant. What are you? Well, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And guess what? It's only four ingredients. And it takes all of 15 minutes and you have a month's worth. 
Uh-huh. So there are always waves. Yeah. I think it's a mindset. I think it's a stubborn mindset. And I think a lot of it has come about over years and conditioning that says, everybody but me is the expert. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to grab this off the shelf. I'm just going to go to this doctor. I'm just going to do what other people tell me because I don't know. But you do. You do know yourself. And I, I think developing that relationship with yourself and that intuition, the more time you spend with your body, the more you know your body and you know when something's up and you know when something's working. And you say, gee, you know, I, I don't know. I don't count calories, but this just seems to work really well for me. Or someone has a digestive disorder, but you know, this really works well and I feel good. And, and gee, my, my skin looks great because I'm eating really cleanly. And, and, oh, I'm using this on my skin and this is fantastic or on my hair. And, and you just know, and you gravitate towards certain things. That makes perfect sense. And since you launched the book, what sort of feedback have you had? Has anyone really taken you by surprise with what they've said? Maybe you've connected with an age group that you didn't see coming. No, I am. Oh, I'm always surprised when I, I, again, I'm always surprised when I have younger readers only because I seem, I think of myself as being somewhat anachronistic in a way and, 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 you know, I'll always joke with younger friends or people and I'll just say, oh, you know me, I have no pop culture reference. I have no idea. I don't know who that is or what that is. Or I'm, you know, I like vintage everything, vintage clothes, vintage music, but I don't know, vintage films. I don't know what that is. So I tend to think that maybe I'm not relatable to a certain age age group, but I think it becomes maybe something interesting to them because it's something that they don't know or they don't see all the time or so that's been kind of cool that I like and the feedback has been phenomenal I it's it's so it's so sweet because you know you you create whatever it is that you create nine times out of ten you're creating because you want to make something you want to do something I have to stop myself now because I've I've been doing this for a little while and I do have different outlets with my career where I have to stop myself from saying, oh, I have to, I have to do that. I really should do this because then the minute it's not coming from the heart, it's going to be crap. Yeah. So <laughs> that's just a fact. So I I'm always amazed when people and when you're writing too, it's, it's like when you're making a film, you do it so far, so much before it's actually out in the world that you almost forget about it a little bit. You know, I've had people say things, you know, ask me about recipes and I have to remember like, wait, which, which recipe was that? Because I wrote it how many years ago? Or I've written so much since then that I have to sort out, oh, wait, okay, right, mm, yeah, all oh, right, that's that one. And it's just so funny. So when people tell me they love the book or, or it's inspiring them or it's helping, I'm just, I'm just over the moon because I would hope that it's helpful to someone. I would hope that it's inspiring, but you never really know until it gets into other people's hands. Well, I read some reviews and it looked as if you were almost a a mentor to some people, really guiding them in that direction and uh, maybe opening up their eyes to an area of self-care that they hadn't ever thought thought about. As you say, previously, they might have just gone to whichever shops and just thought, I'll pick this and I'll pick this and I'll pick this for body and mind and think that that was the only way to look after themselves, but you've given them a different view. You can do it yourself. You can prescribe to your mood, to how you're feeling. So I think, yeah, a mentor is a a good description, I would say. I love that. If if I can be that, then, then I've done my job. And that's wonderful. If I can inspire in any way, in any way, even if it's the smallest way, I've done my work and that's what's so important. And 
And also too, you know, you're not always going to have that ideal moment where you can can make a potion or you can do something. And so this way, if you are going out into the world and you are maybe buying a product or you, you're traveling and something you've made might spoil or whatever your reason is, we all, I, I buy products too off the shelves, but you can make a really educated purchase and you're not just walking into Sephora and the people who are, who are making commissions you know, bless them. They they're they're doing their jobs, but you're not just saying, "Oh, this is the new hot trendy thing," or "This is the new hot trendy ingredient," or "This is, oh, I have to get this because such and such celebrity is endorsing it." Or, no, I can make my own decisions, and I'm looking at this bag and saying, "This, this, this, and this is a very good thing." What is that? I don't know what that is. I don't like that. So. I think that's really important too. And you, it's it's an education, I hope, as well as a, a sensual ritual that you do for yourself. So yes, I, I, I love to think that I've done my job. And I, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine years ago who also creates and sells products. And we kind of almost said at the same time, if you think about it as you're selling something, no, you're sharing, sharing information, sharing whatever it is. That's, that's what makes it work because it's got to come from, I feel like it has to come from that. And um, I think that's, I think that's really, really important to feel like I'm sharing information. I'm probably selling some books along the way, which is wonderful. But I'm sharing information. I'm sharing what I know because I have to. Why? It would be unfair not to share it. You know? Well, I think that is a beautiful place to finish your chat. And now that you've told me that there's more to come, I hope we can chat again. I would love that. And I now also know your website, so I'll be visiting. And I'm guessing if anyone doesn't know the website, could you just share the website address and also your social media details in case anyone wants to check you out. Absolutely. Uh, my, my website is thebeautywitch.com and uh, everything is up there. Articles, links to my monthly column, blogs, everything. And also you can, you can purchase the book through me. You can purchase products in my atelier. If, if you don't have time to concoct, you can purchase something. And also, I would I would also say too, you can get signed copies of the book from me, but also you can get them through my publisher, which is Llewellyn.com. You can get them on Amazon in any country, as far as I know. You can get them uh, at Barnes and Noble or any of the certainly any esoteric bookshops, but also mainstream bookshops as well. And my social media is, I'm mostly active on Instagram because I like, I like visuals, I like pictures. So, and I'll be honest, I've met a lot of really great photographers through Instagram and, and designers, visual people. So that is the Beauty Witch official. And I believe on Facebook and Twitter where I don't lurk very often is Madame Beauty Witch. I believe those are my, but they're all on my website. I just don't go there very often. Yeah, there's always one that say, tends to be the main one, isn't there? So Instagram. Yes, yes. So if you really want to connect with me, yeah. definitely through Instagram, or you can always um, write me a little email, write me a little, little letter. I love to hear from people, answer questions, and there'll be more to come. There'll be more to come for sure. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you so much for talking with me. And I really hope that we do this again because you're just a fountain of knowledge and I'm already inspired to look after myself tonight and there will be some rituals because I think that we need to make more time. So I'm definitely going to do that today. Oh, I love that. I want to hear all about it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take oh. care.